Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Nothing Ventured Primer with me, Arish Shah. Today, I am really excited to have with me in the studio, Paolo Pio. Paolo is the co-founder and general partner at Exceptional Ventures, a fund focused on businesses that are helping people live healthier, happier and longer lives. Paolo, it's great to have you here in the studio with me. Ciao, benvenuto. Grazie mille, Rish. Good morning and thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Excellent. Well, let's dive straight in. So um, can you give our listeners a bit of background on yourself and how you got uh, from the beginning into venture? By all means. So, um, you know, my, I, I had a long trajectory uh, uh, during which I realized I searched for what I really liked. I started my career as, a, as an engineer. I studied computer science in Italy, and then I left and went to work in Silicon Valley. My first job was at Cisco in San Francisco as a software developer. Uh, that was back in 2006. And then I moved uh, uh, closer and closer progressively to business and investments. Mm. Uh, the first change was back in 2009 where I w did product management at Cisco uh, for one of our data center switches. And then I relocated back to Europe, always with them uh, in 2012 uh, in to Switzerland. And I covered uh, uh, Europe as a biz dev lead. Uh, then I took on uh, Africa, then Middle East, uh, then Asia and Australia. And at that point, I knew I wanted to do investments, even though I wasn't exactly sure what part uh, of uh, that industry. So I did an executive MBA here in London, uh, London Business School, during which I looked at uh, a number of different um, investment verticals, uh, uh, private equity, venture capital, uh, asset management, uh, and, uh, and, and hedge funds actually. And eventually realized that uh, venture capital is really the intersection of uh, uh, investments with uh, uh, innovation, with uh, building something mm -hmm. that as an engineer I love. And so I decided to move uh, into VC. And I did so by starting making engine investments uh, very slowly at the beginning. And uh, London is great for that, for you know, kind of like building a network in a, an area where you don't have one and just uh, hustling my way uh, around that and going through uh, entrepreneurship events uh, uh, Monday through Friday uh, until I became a little more comfortable, started making some small checks and eventually got introduced by one of my CEOs to uh, an American firm uh, called Giants Partners. Yeah. They wanted to expand to Europe, wanted to launch in the region, and they were looking for a managing director uh, to, to lead that effort. And so we met and really liked each other, and uh, I joined them. And that was a great match for a number of reasons. Uh, first, uh, Giants did not have a lot of uh, operational experience across Europe, and I did because I ran it for Cisco. Uh, I did not have a lot of investment experience, and Giants did because they had been investing uh, since 2009. The fund started in San Francisco back then. Uh, and then the third great match was uh, uh, the areas of investments. Uh, Giants invest in health and happiness, uh, which are huge areas of passion of mine, as uh, I've done a lot of... Uh, readings and research on uh, uh, meditation, nutrition, uh, fitness, and health uh, uh, in general. Um, and I also started a fitness boot camp in London back in 2015, uh, which we still run called Urban Tribe. And mm -hmm. we have a few thousand people, members. And so really we joined us was a great match. And, um, and um, you know, I joined them and we did uh, very well in uh, starting building relationships with other uh, players in the industries, VCs, accelerators, universities across the UK, Germany, France, Europe, uh, and, you know, uh, started making investments and built a team uh, for them. And then eventually decided to um, uh, go and do my own fund uh, together with um, uh, Matt Cooper, mm -hmm. uh, a friend and now co-founder. Uh, Matt, uh, Matt, Matt's background, he comes from uh, um, 
finance banking. He was one of the founders of Capital One Bank uh, in the late 80s in the US, then um, uh, came to Europe in the late 90s to launch it across Europe and then exited uh, Capital One at the beginning of uh, uh, the 2000 um, when uh, it had become a large uh, enterprise and he enjoys uh, early stage and rolling up his sleeves and so uh, exited it and started making angel investments. Uh, and then actually started working with entrepreneurs to help them at the very beginning of the journey, running happy sleeves. And then uh, among the first ones he, work, he worked with was Octopus. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, he was um, uh, chairman of Octopus for uh, until last year, so mm -hmm. more than 20 years. Wow. Uh, and, uh, and through these 20 years, he invested in more than 150 startups. And so we realized, you know, uh, 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 a year or so ago, a couple of years ago, actually, that we had uh, a lot of common interest in terms of like early stage startups investments, as well as uh, um, uh, health and wellness. And so we decided to see uh, uh, if there was an appetite for a new fund uh, focused around the health and wellness and um, investing in startups that help people live healthier, happier, longer lives, like you correctly articulated. And so we started exceptional ventures uh, at the beginning of last year in January last year we incorporated the first entity and then we started fundraising for it and you know getting licenses through the FCA uh, and eventually did our first closing um, uh, last summer and uh, we launched so here we are amazing uh, congratulations on on the launch of the fund and uh, you know we're gonna talk a little bit about that uh, during the main pod but just for a second it'd be great to understand uh, on exceptional sort of how, you know what's the total AUM uh, what's your sort of check size, what regions, uh, obviously the verticals we're going to talk about a little bit in, in the main episode as well. But yeah, just give us a bit of a flavor of uh, exactly how Exceptional operates. Sounds, sounds good. So we are targeting a 20 million fund. Mm -hmm. We are still raising. We've just done our second closing and we're getting there to the total. Uh, we do checks from 100K to 500K pounds. We are a London-based fund, uh, invest uh, geographically 70% uh, across UK and Europe, 30% opportunistically arrest across the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. And um, so far we've invested in uh, 15 startups uh, and we this is fund one for us. With this fund, we would like to invest across, uh, 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 we want to build a portfolio of 40 companies over three years, uh, which is roughly uh, 13 companies per year. So mm. a tiny bit more than one company a month. That's our investment pace. And so far we've been um, uh, uh, right on target. Uh, of the 15 companies we invested in, uh, 10 are in the UK, four are in Europe, um, France, Belgium, Germany, Switzerland, and one is in the US. Uh, and this reflects the strength of our network, which comes from mainly this region, right? Uh, and a lot of the companies we invested in were entrepreneurs we already knew. Mm -hmm. For example, the first two uh, uh, companies of Exceptional Ventures were founded by entrepreneurs, which I invested in when I was a joyous. An angel, okay. Which, okay. A joyous, yeah, Joyance. and then they got acquired, mm -hmm. and then they went on to do something else, and they gave me a ring, and, and, and they were fitting the investment thesis of the new fund, and so it's easier when that happens, right? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so, and in terms of uh, uh, st uh, stage, it's mainly precedenced, uh, and, uh, you know, which is the vast majority of what we've done, and then a couple were at Series A, again, entrepreneurs, which we already knew uh, from, from before. Um, yeah, and in terms of verticals, uh, our top verticals are health tech, food tech, mm -hmm. and we have a smaller allocation for financial health. Uh, and this is what we've been in, I've been investing on, you know, uh, for the past uh, five years of my life, and Matt even longer. Um, um, so health tech, we look at uh, uh, longevity. Mm -hmm. So companies that help people, uh, uh, again, extend their lifespan and also their health span within it. Mm -hmm. uh, we look at fertility and companies that uh, help, you know, how can technology help you have um, children later in life, which is a strong trend lately. Mm -hmm. uh, we look at uh, mental health, huge top of mind, uh, even more so after the pandemic. And uh, from that one, you have both technology that, that can help with digital therapeutics or apps, and uh, but at the same time also science, right? With uh, 
psychedelics that more and more are showing uh, uh, results in uh, treating uh, um, uh, treatment resistant uh, mental health conditions. Mm -hmm. uh, we look at uh, uh, physical health, we look at gut microbiome and the connections, uh, the, the gut uh, brain axis. Um, so this for us, it's, 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 you know, our main pillar health tech. And the second one would be food tech. Within food tech, we have invested uh, across uh, uh, alternative proteins, mm -hmm. uh, uh, precision fermentation, uh, both uh, infrastructure as well as a specific companies, for example, doing precision fermentation dairies. So making dairy products that have never seen animals. Uh, and we look at um, the future of drinks. Um, and these are the two main. And then the smaller one is uh, financial health. And financial health would be financial educations yeah. and, um, and, um, and really making people financially independent uh, sooner. So the idea is that, um, again, ideally we want to as a fund, uh, back companies that improve people's uh, quality of life yeah. uh, and allow people to get to their later stages of life with uh, better mental health, physical health, you know, able to enjoy life. And, and, and having said that, you're going to have a longer life and you're going to be able to enjoy it for longer. You also need to be financially uh, uh, independent sooner, right? And, and hence, I think this, is, this all ties together out of our three verticals. Yeah, absolutely. So <clears throat> if you were to think about three companies, either inside your portfolio or outside your portfolio for that matter, what, what three companies are you really excited about at the moment? Yeah, so I think... Um, well, maybe I'll, 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 you know, take one per vertical. I think health tech, one that we recently invested in is called Glycanage. And uh, uh, it's it's in uh, lo the longevity space, meaning uh, you can have, uh, you can do a, a blood drop, they analyze it. And based on that, they tell you your biological age. Mm -hmm. Your biological age is a reflection of your- Overall health, I guess, yeah. Yes, specifically in their case, is a reflection of, of your um, uh, immune system status mm -hmm. and of the inflammation in your body. And the structure they analyze, which are glycans, uh, when we are younger, prevent inflammation. And as we age, uh, they tend to let it come and promote inflammation, right? And so they map your glycome against the 170,000 that they measured. And, you know, they tell you where you fall. Um, so not only is great because it's a, it's a measure of your status, but also you can then have a call with your specialist. Mm -hmm. And they tell you what actions you can take to improve on your biological age, right? And they can be lifestyle changes, for example, uh, you know, personalized fitness plan or nutrition plan or de-stress and meditation and breath work uh, or um, sleep. But also they can be through clinics, for example, which are their B2B model, right? Mm -hmm. So longevity clinics that we sell their test can also be like, for example, for men, testosterone replacement therapy. And for women can be estrogen replacement therapy. And then, um, you know, you would measure today and then again, do the treatment and then measure again in six months. And maybe that, and that shows you how your biological age has improved or not. Yeah. And if the treatment they actually you're following helped you uh, today, maybe you tested uh, 50 and then in six months you test 48 and, and then, you know, things are working out. Amazing. And uh, what about, uh, so that was the health vertical. Yeah. What about in food tech? So food tech, we are very excited about uh, a number of industries, but um, what, you know, one of the companies we backed is called Bombivan in France. And uh, what they do is um, they do uh, uh, um, precision fermentation dairies. And uh, I, I find it fascinating because we all use uh, alternative, like alternative milk, mm. right? I mean, oat milk and cashew milk and, uh, and almond milk. And if you look at the nutrition profiles of those, they are not great at all. Uh, full of sugars, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so yeah. it's a lot of sugar. It's not a lot of protein, right? You know, it's it's far from the original, which is actually really good from a nutritional profile. Although there is intolerances of all sorts, and 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 so so, Bon Vivant allows to do milk products that have never seen cows, right? And how do they do it? Through a concept called precision fermentation. Precision fermentation allows you, basically regular fermentation, you turn, you know, for wine or beer, you take, you turn sugar into alcohol, 
right? Uh, that's what the yeast does. And the precision fermentation, you instruct the yeast to turn sugar into a specific protein of your choosing. And in this case, they chose dairy proteins, mm -hmm. which would be uh, uh, whey proteins. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, uh, and that's how they started. That's what they're doing. And then uh, they're doing, you know, you first prove that you can do that in a small bioreactor, one liter, two liters, three liters. And then you start scaling to five and 10 liters and so on and so forth. And, uh, you know, they already passed the 800 liters. So uh, yeah, very, very promising. And, and I can see the applications in providing uh, um, you know, dairy uh, alternatives, which are uh, as nutrition as, as nutritious as the original with the same mouthfeel and actually taste good, but uh, do not have the intolerances, uh, do not have the contamination by antibiotics, fecal contaminations, and um, have a much lower impact on uh, uh, the planet, right? From a CO2 perspective, uh, uh, from a land and water consumption perspective. Amazing. Well, listen, Paolo, we're going to get into a lot of this stuff on the main podcast. Thank you so much for joining me uh, today. Can't wait to get into the uh, into the detail. Thank you, Arish, for having me. It's a pleasure. Don't forget to check out the full episode on Friday where we go deep into the detail with Paolo on all things health, food tech and happiness and longevity. <laughs>